Hello, 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 Green and Giant here, and welcome to another tutorial on basic computing and programming aimed at the uh, GCSE syllabus at the moment. But really, wow, when I looked at that syllabus uh, when I started tutoring for it, I was surprised. I never did this when I was at school, and it's not that long ago before anyone says. Um, I'm only 29, but we didn't do any of this sort of stuff. We, it was purely uh, Microsoft Excel. Um, I think we touched on Access very briefly, uh, but that was our uh, GCSE and AS level IT, actually. Uh, so this is really a um, uh, a leap forwards, and, and it's, oh, it's blooming brilliant to see, uh, see the, the young guys of today um, looking at this uh, really important topic. Everything these days contains some sort of microprocessor. You know, you've got kettles that change colour when they're at the right temperature and so on and so forth. All that is microprocessor controlled. Um, so uh, it, it's absolutely fantastic to see. So what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to do the same tutorial as last, uh, last time but in a different approach. So as you can see here, if I, let's go full screen on there. Um, so we can see, this was the code we wrote last time. If I run it, it asks you for a password. Uh, and if I key in a password uh, that has lowercase, uppercase, and numbers, and uh, is six to 12 characters in length, then it should say I've got a strong password, uh, and if I key in one that's oops, key in one that's too short, for example, wait a little bit, cat clawing up the furniture, um, it throws an error and doesn't let us do it. Now this works. This is a solution to the problem, uh, and it works well, but it's not ideal. Um, the methodology is wrong in my opinion um, because the way this is and to a large extent the way the syllabus shows it is you start at the beginning and you work your way down until you get an answer it's, uh, it's what's called the bottom up approach um, so you, you make things work and you bodge fix things that is not ideal for programming why? well this script takes uh, asks the user for a password and, and tells you whether it's good or not. On its own, it's completely useless. So this would need to be part of a wider program. So for example, um, choosing a password on a website, choosing a password for a bit of software, uh, so on and so forth. So what we'd need to do is copy and paste this into a bigger site. That has a number of problems. For a start, we've got um, a blocking function here, um, which is less than ideal. So it means that if we are sat on waiting for the user to input something, then the whole of the code, the bigger code, will stop waiting for that to happen and that's no good particularly here you know on a website or something like that where you've got other things going on in the background you might want to detect if the user actually clicks on a different button like forgot my password well the computer won't be able to register that because it's sat here waiting for a user input hello pip um so so that's not ideal also we have what's called global variables here so this is a variable that is visible to the whole program because it's outside of any scope. Now, what do I mean by scope? Well, we've not talked about functions yet. We're going to do that in this episode. But if a, um, a uh, variable is within a loop or a for or a function or a class or something like that, um, then this only exists... Oh, my God, Pippa. Um only exists in this loop. If I was to say do here print my underscore password this should throw an error. Um, 
<laughs> which it doesn't typically. Um, that's because it's a while loop. Never mind. We'll come on to this <laughs> shortly. Yeah, my bad. Uh, so you can do that in a while loop. So this it will be visible outside. Why is that a problem? Well, if we've got this huge bit of code for a website or, or for whatever the program is, well, my password might already be declared somewhere else and you're going to get errors when you copy and paste this in because you're going to be declaring a variable twice. So my password might be used elsewhere and then the whole system gets confused as to which one it's talking about. Now, we could make these um, local variables, we could wrap this around uh, and box it in and really go bottom up um, and just sort of block it from doing anything bar what we want it to do but it's it's not the methodology we want to look at so let's try this a different way and let's go for I want that one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that okay so let's talk about classes this is object orientation here. If you don't know what object orientation is, quickly smash it into Google. Now pause this video uh, and have a look at the wiki, so on and so forth. Um, don't worry about the terminology too much, but just pictorially have a look at what it means. Now, with the functional based approach, which is mm, almost what we were getting towards last time, things are all very sequential and they happen in order and you've got blocks of code that do different things here we're going to wrap that up and make it a class won't explain too much about what a class is at this stage because as i say you should have hopefully paused it and had a quick look we're going to get straight into using it so let's do that so how do we define a class in python well nice and easy it's the word class you see it goes blue because it's a python keyword and we're going to name this class um, password handler. Okay. Now, using um, a fairly traditional coding style here, where classes um, have capital letters um, at the start of new words. This will become slightly important shortly down the line. Um, because it makes things a lot vis more visible and easier to understand. And then we need a colon to tell Python that we're now going to define a class. Now within this class, um, we're probably going to want some sort of memory. Uh, and what are the things we want to remember? Well, we want to remember the password itself. So for the time being, we'll do that as an empty string. So that's just quotes where I could put a word in here but I'm going to put nothing in here to start with so it's a blank string we probably want to remember the strength because that is um, important to us here and let's set that to zero like we did before and we're probably going to want to remember the length of the password as well so let's set that to zero now, a uh, bit of a C coding style here. An underscore at the start of a variable tells the user that this is what's called a private variable. So anyone operating outside of the scope of this class, which will become a little bit more obvious as we go on, should not be trying to alter these variables directly. They should be doing it through another means. Um, you can in Python, in C, well C++, you can make these private. Um, and in, in C++ you'll put private colon like that. And that stops the user being able to modify these variables. So for example, we might not want anyone being able to see this password. So in C++ you can do that, you can force it. Um, in Python you can't, but traditionally if you put an underscore at the start, um, it, it tells a, a, someone who's experienced the programming that, oh, you shouldn't mess with this, there's another way. So that's the memory we've set up there. 
and we're going to want some functions. Now we've not talked about functions yet. A function is a block of code that is wrapped around and we give it a name and then we can just interact with that name. We don't have to worry about what's going on within the function. We just give it some information or give it some data and we get some information back. Now we did look at this slightly last time. So for example, um, we applied function to a string. So we did dot upper bracket bracket um, and that basically took in the string um, and checked whether it was uppercase and re returned true or false. We did the is digits as well uh, and a couple of other bits and bobs. So this is how we're thinking about it. Let's think about it top down. What does this password handler have to do? Well, first of all, it's got to be able to set a password. Yeah? So we're going to define a function, and that's using the keyword def. And let's call it set password. Now, within the class, we want to be able to get these variables. So we want to be able to see this. At the moment we won't be able to because of the way the classes work. So we're going to define an input to this function. So it's in the brackets called self. Now in Python, when you do this, that means anything that starts with uh, self from here on within the function um, will be able to get you know, other, fun other methods. So this is a method. Uh, that's the name for the function within a class um, and the variables within it, the memory. That'll become a little bit more obvious as we go through. And we want this to either return true or false, say. So let's say if password input is OK, return uh, true. If password is not OK, return false. <laughs> Sorry, the cat's going mad. There you are, have your toy. So I'm not defining what we're doing at the moment. I'm just doing it in sort of uh, pseudocode, if you like, which, you, which is a really good way to start programming. So let's forget about that now. What else are we going to need to do? Well, we already know what we need to do because we've read through the problem. We need to check whether or not the password is the right length. So is it six characters or longer or 12 characters or, or fewer? Um, so let's create another function called check password, password length. And this will probably return true or false as well. If length is OK, return true. Oops. Otherwise, or else, I really should say return false. <laughs> She's bouncing on the mouse now. Right. What do we want this to do? Well, this needs some information. It needs to know what the password is. And actually, so does set password. So it needs to know what the user is input. So let's pass it another variable called password. And similarly here as well. OK. So you'll see the naming style here for methods within a class. We use lowercase and we use underscores. In class definitions themselves, we use capital letters and we ignore white space. Doesn't matter, but this is a, a, a coding style, a, a typing style that is very, very common. And if you can get used to that straight away, it makes things a lot easier to understand because you know straight away, if you see something with a capital letter, it's a class. If you see something with underscores, you know it's a method. So you're not wondering what it is if it's badly named, for example. 
So that's check password length. What else do we need to do? Well, we need to check password strength. Check password strength. We want to get at the memory. And we want to give it the password we're going to check. There we go. If strength is okay, we want to return what? Well, we really want to return a bit more information than true or false. Maybe we want to return the strength of the password. So let's start off with the strength being zero. We're going to do something. So check strength. If strength is okay, we're probably going to want to do set the strength in the memory of the password handler to whatever we've we've calculated here, so this number will change. And then return oops strength rather than return true. Otherwise well, what do we want to do? Probably just return zero. Zero false, it's the same thing. But for readability, because we're calling strength a number, let's let's stick with zero, one, two, and three. One for weak, two for medium, three for strong. Okay, right, hopefully you're following along here. So what does set password need to do? Well, first of all, it needs to check password length. And we're going to give it the password that's been passed to the uh, that's been given to this function. That's going to return true or false. Ah, okay, so we can use an if statement on this. So let's do reverse logic again. So if not, so the reverse logic means we'll get to here, password length, if not, so false becomes true. So therefore, this is if it is wrong, i.e.password is not the right length, we're going to want to return, let's say, zero to the user. Okay, I'm just making that up. That could return anything at this point, so we've not finished. Let's get rid of that comment. In fact, let's clear this out altogether because we're starting to pad this out now with what we actually want it to do. Else, right, so if we get to this point, the password is the right length. What do we need to do now? So now we need to check the strength of the password. So self dot check password strength, and we're going to pass send it the password as well. And then that's going to give us a number. Okay. So what can we do with this? Well, in the function we are setting the strength variable in memory, this one here, there. And actually, yeah, okay, so we're setting that there. Now then, if this returns a number greater than zero, then we know that the password strength is okay. Okay, hmm. too many okays. So therefore, the password length is fine, the password strength is fine. So what we can do is we can set the password in memory to the new one that we've just input. Otherwise, or else, if the password strength is not greater than zero, therefore, realistically, it should only equal zero. 
um, unless we get some really funny error, which we might want to code in later, then the password strength is not good enough. So we want to stick with the old password. Do not update stick with old password. And therefore we want to say return zero. Now, last thing we need to do is exit this function. And let's say we're going to give the user a bit of information. Let's return oops, of dot strength. Now, I could put this up here. Yeah. But if we wanted to add something in later, it would be hard to see what's going on and so on and so forth. So if I put it here, make sure my indents are correct, we know that at this point, everything has passed its checks. So if we wanted to add in another check, we can just add it there, above. OK. We've still not actually done anything yet. We've not checked anything. All we've done is put placeholders in. So, right, there's going to be a function that does this. But I don't know what that function is yet. So, here we go. So, let's start looking at the check password length then. Shall we do that first? So... What information do we have? Well, we have the password that the user has uh, given to this function. And we want to check whether this is greater than or equal to 6 and less than or equal to 12, just like we did before. So, let's just type this straight in. And password is less than or equal to 12. So that's exactly the same as we did last time. Um, except we use positive logic on this in fact I'll tell you what no let's not do that then let's use negative logic less than 6 or greater than 12 so it's outside the bounds we want to return 0 else return Uh, ba, 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 ba. There we go. Not quite woken up yet. There we are. So we've got to use the standard function len, which gets us the length of that string. And we want to return len password. So that means we don't need that, no. Put some more spaces in. There we are. So what does this password do? Well, we give it our new password. If the length is less than six, oh, why? Uh, sorry, and that should be or, of course, or the length is greater than 12, we're going to return zero, which is the same as false. Otherwise, we're going to return the length of the password. So if we get a positive integer, so a positive number, then we know that it's some, going to be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. has to be. Otherwise, it would not have got through this check. That's all that needs to be. Okay. Now, we could put a little error message in here. Uh... Password length invalid and say six to oop fat fingers needs to be six to twelve. So we know if we fail the check here, it's gonna print something to the screen. Now 
if you're a coder watching this, brilliant, I'm not going to stop you, um, you'll know that there's a better way of doing that, um, using error logs and so on and so forth. We're not going to cover that just yet. So for the time being, let's just dump everything onto the screen so we can see what's happening. Right, so we also want to check the password strength. So let's have a look at this. And we're going to come back and optimise these momentarily as well. So we can use the same code as before. So we can do upper, lower, and uh, number. Now these are defined within the function. So we're not going to be able to access these numbers outside of this function. So this function can't see it, that function can't see it, anyone operating outside the class can't see it. And that's a good thing. Good thing for two reasons. One, it means they can't be mod modified um, maliciously or otherwise. So someone couldn't hack into this and change those numbers and force it to take a... Um, a password that was incorrect, or they couldn't accidentally modify it. Um, they're, they're just not accessible. There's also another advantage, and that's in terms of memory. All of these functions are doing lots of different things, and each thing takes up a bit of space in memory, or a byte of space, or, or, or you know, a few bytes of space. We don't hey. need these in other functions or later on in the code or well after we've done these checks so what's the point in tying up memory with these being outside and defined globally well there isn't so when we run this function it allocates some memory uses that memory and then as soon as we return out of this function we don't need it anymore so in the background the memory management system that, that runs in the back of the, the code We'll just go, oh, we don't need these anymore, and then free up all that memory. So you don't need millions of megabytes, gigabytes, whatever of RAM. So it just gets rid of it. And that's that's good. That's what we want. So we've defined some local memory. So we're going to do for character in password, just like we did before. Uh, if character dot upper... Oh, sorry, hang on. If character is the same as the character in upper, uppercase and character dot is digit, uh, and we don't want it to be that, so we can put an inverter there, and we can say upper equals one. exactly what we did last time. If character is the same as the character in lowercase and not character dot is di digit then lower equals one. And finally character um, we can just do is digit straight away then number equals one okay so now these will change to a one if any of the characters are either an upper a lower or a number uppercase lowercase or a digit not quite sure what the cat's doing here we pip Say hello. Hello. Meow, meow. Okay. Now, like we did before, strength is equal to upper plus lower plus number. And then if strength is equal to 3, then we can break out of this and just save doing any more checks.
because it can never be more than three. Okay. And then what we're going to do is, so what do we do here? So if the strength is okay, so let's do that. So if strength is greater than zero, then self dot strength is equal to strength. So what we do in here, well, if the strength we just calculated is greater than zero, therefore the password in our definition is okay, then we're going to update the memory for the class and tell it what the new strength of this password is. And then, what do we need to do? Well, if that's the case, then we're going to return strength, otherwise return zero. Well, because we've done this check, yeah, so strength will already be zero, so we don't actually need that, and we don't need that. Yeah? So, if the strength happened to be zero, then it is zero, so it's going to return zero. If it's one, two, or three, it's going to return one, two, or three. But it's only going to update the memory if the um, strength was greater than zero. But there's a problem here. Can you see it? We've updated the strength of the password, but we haven't updated the password itself or the length. So now we've got a mismatch. So we could still have an old password in here, an old length here, but a new strength for a different password that's not in memory yet. So we don't want to do that. We're thinking too much. We don't want to do that. Check password strength should only take the password in and return the strength. Not worry about memory. That's not its purpose. So it purely does that. It's going to return the strength. Keep things, keep things simple. So let's go back to the top. So we're happy with check the password strength then. We give it password, returns the strength. So let's minimize that. Check password length. Takes in the password. Does some stuff with it. Uh, and returns the length. Now this is a bit more involved. Because we want it to return zero if it's not good enough not just return the length. Okay, so we do that. Now we do have, in fact, yeah, no, let's ignore that, ignore that. There we go, okay, cool. So set, set password. So we want to check the password length. So if the password length is not right, then return zero. Otherwise, if it is right, then what do we want to do? Hmm. Well, we want to update the length, do we? No, we don't, because we've not checked the strength is good enough yet. So we don't want to update anything at this point. If check password strength is greater than zero. Okay, let's stick with negative logic, and let's go with less than or equal to what, no, zero. Technically, it should only be zero. But we could put other errors in if we wanted to return minus one. Something like that. So, if the length's good, the strength isn't good, then what do we want to do? We want to print password not strong enough. Use uppercase, lowercase, and numbers and then return zero because we didn't do anything so now because we've inverted the logic here this means if we get here length and strength are okay so what can we do now then ah well now we can update all our memory. 
so we can do self pass oops self dot password is equal to password we can do self dot length is equal to r we don't have access to this number here because we've not saved it we've done a check on it here but we've not assigned it to a variable locally here sorry it's that one isn't it that one there hmm and also we've used the number here so let's do let's change this first of all let's say equal to zero so we're using a similar scheme throughout just makes things a lot easier to read but we want to save this number so that we can then potentially use it if we get all the way down here okay well let's do that length is equal to this and then we've already got this number so we don't need to run all of that function again because it's going to take up computer time we could but we don't need to we can now just check that variable directly so hopefully you can see this is the same the only difference is we now have this variable which we can use here there we are and of course the last bit of memory we want to update is self dot strength is equal to ah same problem we've checked the password strength but we've not actually saved it we don't have access to any of these we don't have access to that because that's within this function only and this is a completely or this method only should I say this is a different method so we can't get access to that so we can do exactly the same thing here strength is equal to that one and then we don't need to run this function this method twice so we can check that directly and then we have access to this hockey dokey so let's have a look what have we done so our main function set password give it a password length self so check password length and we're going to give that function the password here right self means it's a, me uh, a method in this class or, or a part of this class check so we jump down to here there's the password there that we've input we could call this something different doesn't matter if the length is less than 6 or greater than 12 password length is invalid we're going to return 0 otherwise we'll return the length of the password ah so now we know we can do a bit of optimization here can't we so len is a, pa is a function and we're running that function three times on the same thing it takes time to run a function a lot of time to run a function we don't need to do that so let's do it once and then we don't need to run it that time that time or that time we can just do a, a very quick comparison of memory here does exactly the same thing and that is going to vanish as soon as we exit out of this function if we've not saved it it's gone we don't need it so but in this instance we are going to save whatever is returned so it's either the length or zero to this variable here if it is less than or equal to zero realistically it's only going to be zero then password is not the right length return zero so the password was not updated cool otherwise so the length is greater than zero we're going to create a new variable check password strength so we jump down to here we're going to create a little bit of local memory which will vanish as soon as we exit this function 
We're going to check each character, whether it's uppercase and not a digit. If it is, we'll plonk a one in here. Is it lowercase and not a digit? We'll plonk a one in there. Is it a digit? We'll plonk a one in there. And as soon as we either run out of characters in the password, or we hit three, being the sum total of those, then we will break out of this for loop. And we'll return the strength, which can either be 0, 1, 2, or 3. Okay, so now this is getting set to either 0, 1, 2, or 3. If it's less than or equal to 0, then the password is not strong enough. We could do something really cool here. We could set the required strength. And let's say it's got to be 1. So if strength is less than or equal to the required strength, no, we just want less than the required strength. And that's part of the class, so we need the self um, uh, declaration there. So if it is less than or equal to, sorry, if it's less than 1, so in this case 0, password is not strong enough. If we later down the line wanted to only accept strong passwords, change that to 3. So now, if the strength of the new password the user's just input is 0, 1 or 2, it will fail. Password not strong enough. So that's really quite useful to have. So let's leave that in. Otherwise, so if it is better uh, or equal to the required strength, then we're going to set the password, we're going to set the length, we're going to set the strength, and then finish that statement. And let's say password updated, and do something you wouldn't really do in real life, and print the password in clear text to the screen. And then we'll return the strength. So let's just get rid of this white space now. I don't think we need any more comments because they're, they're reasonably self-explanatory. And we can minimise all of these now. We don't need them. If I run this code, nothing will happen. Might get an error. Nope. Hey, no errors. That's always a good start. Because we've not actually done anything yet. We've declared all these functions in this class, but we've not done anything with them. So the first thing we do is we need to create an instance of this class. Called an object. So, let's say my, pa uh, my yeah, password handler is equal to password handler. So now this variable, and we know variables because they can contain strings or numbers, is actually one of these. It contains all that knowledge. And then what we can do with that is we can access the functions within it. So my password handler dot set password and what do we want to send it? Well we want to send it what the user has put in so user attempt let's say is equal to input please enter new password So what they key in will get saved as user attempt, and then we're going to try and set the password to whatever that was. So user attempt now, whatever I key in, will appear there. So in Python, we ignore the first declaration there in this uh, particular tutorial, and then it goes through 
and gets copied all the way down there. Okay, cool. So let's run this, let's see what happens. Please enter new password. Well, let's try one that works first of all. Ah, oh, here we go. String has no one, no attribute that is, is digit. Okay, that's because I'm a moron. And I, oh, hello. And I did this last time as well. These should be lowercase d's. Let's try that again. God blimey, was that the only bug? That's good. Password updated. Password. Mint. It worked. Okay, let's try one that's not good enough. Let's say one that's too short. Password length invalid. Ah, it'll be 6 to 12. Put a little bit of information in there. Let's try again. Um, let's try one that's too long. The length invalid. Okay, so that works. Let's try one that's only lowercase. Takes it. So, what we can do now... Let's get funky. Let's say it has to be medium or strong. So now it has to be of strength 2 or better. All lowercase. Oh, we got a bug. We got ourselves a bug. Okay, so let's have a look. Why did that allow me to do that? So I don't need that one, that one's fine. So what we want to know is what this is outputting. So let's run that again in exactly the same way. Two. Okay. So for some reason this is outputting Two, which is a medium strength for only lower case. Well, I think I've found it. That's a function, so it needs the brackets. Right, so I wasn't going to talk about this here. Characters, if you refer to a function without the uh, brackets or parenthesis if you're American then you're basically saying does this function exist is it there well yes it is there but that's not what we're asking we want it to run the function we want to ask it is it a digit and return true or false so let's try that again aha there we go that's what we wanted this is now outputting a 1, so that is now outputting the correct number. And it's saying password's not strong enough. Awesome. Uh, so let's try the capital. And it takes that. Okay. Let's say the password has to be strong. No, nope, won't take that. Won't take that. Won't take that. But it will take that. Awesome. Right. So this works. I'm fairly happy that this does exactly what we want it to do. And it does nothing more or less than our last example that we did last time. The only difference is we can change that, but we could do that before anyway, just by changing the number. But what's the difference? Well, the only code the programmer needs to know to make this work is... Well, that line you should already know, because it's just making a de declaration. It's that line there to set a password. But that's all it does. 
we want to get that password now. So let's put another function in here, shall we? And let's put it in here. Doesn't matter where it goes, really. So let's say get password. We don't need to pass it anything, so it can just be self. And what we want to do is we want to return the password. Uh, okay, so return self password. And now the actual programmer doesn't need to know anything about this. Don't need to know how it works, what the memory is inside it, it's all local, so there won't be any conflicts. If I then wanted to set a new variable, in fact, let's try it. Let's not call that user attempt, let's try under, ooh. Let's try and call it the same as that. In fact, let's really try and upset it. So let's call it something really, really stupid. So let's call it underscore requires strength. Now, this, if it is exactly the same bit of memory as that, will cause carnage in the check password length function. Because now it's not equal to 3, which is set at this point. It's now equal to... you know, capital P, A, 5, 5, W, O, R, D. And how can you compare the length of a number and a string of letters? It, it makes no sense. So this should cause carnage. If that and that are the same. What I'm telling you is they are not. So hopefully, when I uh, oh, my sleeve here, No conflict. It did not make an error. If we did that when last uh, the the example we did last time, we'd be redeclaring a variable or basically updating it to a different thing, and it would have it, it would have just gone nuts. So that is really useful. Now in this case, we probably don't want to do that. Um, so let's change that back to something sensible. Get rid of that horrendous typo there, look. and then we can do print your password is oops, my password handler dot get password, and it's a function, so we need the brackets. So this should get us whatever that password is. So let's do a few trial runs on this. We've still got strength 3 as required. So let's put one that's not strength 3. What do you think we're going to get? What we should get is password strength not okay, whatever the message was, and your password is blank because it should not have updated the memory here because the password was not good enough. And that's exactly what we've got. However, if we do enter a valid password, it saves it to the memory. So now when we do the get password, which basically returns this value here, We've now saved it in the memory because it was sufficient. Okay, let's look at putting a default password in. One that's, you know, set by the system. So let's put uh, an invalid password in. So this one's not long enough. Password length invalid. Your password is password. So it's not updated it. And therefore it's not changed it but it's also not just erased it and then you don't know what the hell your password is 
So that's good. But now, if I insert new password, it's now updated the password. One thing you'll notice is this check only happens on a new password. It doesn't happen on one that's already existing. Okay. So why is this better? As I say, it's a class. We can then upgrade that into a library. We'll talk about that another day. Um, but all the, all the user code is here is we'll create an instance of it. So we've got an object that we can use. We're going to input some data. Okay, that's not really part of this. That could be anywhere. So that could be up here. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to create this in memory and then we're going to set the password. Okay, let's do some more funky stuff. And then we'll uh, then we'll call it a day. Why is this so cool? Well, one of the things we don't like to do which we touched on last time was you don't want to copy and paste code. So if I wanted two password handlers I don't know, to save one as a backup and one in the main memory, say. Then, let's create another one. Second handler. Now we've got two of those, but we've not copied and pasted it. It's only one line extra of code. But we can use this in exactly the same way. So, we can do, and I'm just going to copy and paste for the example. Primary password is, and then secondary password is my second handler. There we are. So now we should be creating two instances of this. We're going to put the user input in twice and then we're going to print the results of the screen. And there we go. We get password updated twice and primary password and secondary password. So we've got two instances of that. Why is that cool? Okay. Let's put another function in here. Def set required strength. Um, we want to input the class memory and let's call it let's call it new strength. We want to do a check, make sure that it's sensible. If new strength uh, is less than zero or new strength is greater than three, sorry, that's nonsense, less than one or greater than three, then invalid strength and let's just tell the user it's got to be between one and three else we'll set the required strength to that so let's reset that. So the required strength is 1. But now we have a function where we can change that. So let's say the primary password handler has to have a stronger password. Okay. And just for clarity on the output, I'm just going to comment out this line here. Just so we don't need to look at that. My password handler dot 
Uh, set required strength. And let's make it really, really strong. But let's say the second handler will take a really weak password. So let's run this. Please enter new password. Well, let's put a strong password in first. Oop, strength not defined. Have I been a punker? Oh yeah, I have indeed. There we are, little typo there, try that again. There we go. So just as before, password was strong enough, it was a level 3 password, so it's been updated in both, because it's greater, uh, greater than or equal to 3, and it's greater than or equal to 1. Okay, what happened if we put a medium password in? What do we think is going to happen? Well, a medium password should not meet the criteria here. Because it's not a level 3 password. So this one should not update. But a medium is greater than weak. So this one should. So use capital P, password. Password not strong enough. So your primary password has stayed as whatever the default was. Secondary password has been updated because it met that criteria. In fact, what I might do... So let's just blank that out. I'm going to get rid of... Uh, no, I'll leave that in. I'll leave that in. So let's just try that again. There we are. So the password wasn't strong enough here. Sorry, here. So it's still blank. Whereas this one was, so it took it. Why is that good? Well, let's give these some better names. That's mine. So I've not done anything here, but changed the naming. So let's do a couple of in inputs. Uh, Simon. Please enter Simon's new password please enter Dave's new password now we've said that Simon's password has to be strong Dave's password has to be weak or better so let's say I want a strong one, Dave's new password, he wants a medium one, oh, and I forgot to change the output text here, oh, you're Simon's, that doesn't make sense. Again, there we are. So, this is where things start getting really useful. We've got all of this. In fact, there's more 
There's more, there's more, there's loads of it. Let's expand all of that. Check in password lengths. Check in the strength of the password. Saving it to memory if it's good enough. Not saving it to memory if it isn't. And remembering it. But we don't need to know any of that. Why should we? It's not clogging up our system. It's not clogging up any of, of our readable code. All I need to know is... Well, let's input a password. Let's input what our required strength is. Which defaults to weak. So we wouldn't even need to do this if we didn't want to. So let's get rid of them. Set the password and if it's good enough it saves it. And because I've commented these out, these are both weak. Therefore, it saved those passwords. This is great. Oh, and there's someone at the door. Stand by, I'll be right back. Alright, sorry about that. With the magic of editing, I should be able to get rid of that. <laughs> so, where do we get to? So we got all this information, but all we need to know is that it's one of them. So if I've got a database, say, a website database that's got hundreds of thousands of users in it, I don't have to copy and paste this. For each user, I just give them a password. And we'll see where that becomes really useful next time. So look forward to next time where what we'll do is we'll start thinking about creating uh, a bit of a database, have multiple users in there, and be able to create new users. And each of them will have a password that we can update and it gets checked and we'll use all this code from before. As before, if you like this video, yeah, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Uh, please leave comments, tell me what you did like, what you didn't like, what you didn't understand, um, if there's something you're not quite sure of and you would like me to cover or cover in a different way, then please do comment and I'm more than happy to do that um, on the next episode. But until then, see you soon!